Hello there and welcome friends. This video is all about all the sorts of permanent boosts that you can give your character in Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. There is actually quite a lot of them really, such as to ability scores, armor class, and even skill points, never mind all sorts of other permanent effects. So let's get started. First, let us talk about the tomes that permanently enhance your ability scores. The first one you can find is the manual of quickness of action plus 2, for a permanent plus 2 inherent bonus to dexterity. You can find it in the Midnight Fane area during chapter 3 or 4, but be advised you will have to fight the infamous Playful Darkness enemy. The good thing is I already have a guide on how you can easily defeat Playful Darkness even on Unfair with any mythic character that you can find here to the side and also down below in the video description. After you defeat Playful Darkness, you'll be able to loot the Tome of Dexterity plus 2 from one of the skeletons here. I don't think you can actually return to this area after a certain point during chapter 5, so be sure to pick it in chapter 3 or 4. The second tome you can get is the Tome of Leadership and Influence plus 2 for a plus 2 inherent bonus to Charisma. Now finding this tome can be rather tricky, you can only get it during chapter 4, so it is missable, and you have to complete the Demodent Conspiracy side quest. Completing this quest is actually a multi-step process, so here's how it goes. First, to the east of the 10,000 Delights area, you can find a Thanatotic Titan's Minor Rune by defeating the Demodend Mob Leader enemy. After that, use this rune on the slot at the lower city, around the southwest part of the map, that will charge the rune and you'll have to fight a few demons. After that, go to the middle city, nearby Latverg's mansion, put the rune there and charge it again. The third rune slot is on top of Willado's mansion. As usual, put the rune there and kill the enemies. Now the last place you have to go is to the hidden abode area close to the Haran of Ardent Dreams. By completing all of these four you will unlock the portal to the hidden abode area. Once inside you'll have to fight quite a lot of demodons and demons to finish the demodon conspiracy quest. And it is there that you can also find the Tome of Charisma plus 2. Once again, this tome is missable and you can only find it during chapter 4, so keep that in mind. The third tome you can find, and this is also only at chapter 4, so missable as well, is the Tome of Understanding plus 2, for a plus 2 inherent permanent bonus to Wisdom. Finding this one at least is rather simple, all you have to do is defeat Melasmera the Umbral Dragon on the Colifir Mines area. The last tome you can get in the game is the Tome of Clear Thought plus 2 for a plus 2 inherent bonus to intelligence. To find this tome, head to the Polura's Fall area and then solve the constellation puzzle in the central part of the map. To solve it, simply click on the constellations in this order. 1. Newlyweds, 2. Daughter, 3. Rider, 4. Patriarch, 5. Pack and lastly the Follower. This will unlock a door to the left where you'll get to find this tome inside the chest. Now the amusing part about the Tome of Intelligence is that it can be either the earliest tome you find or the last one based on your mythic path. Angel characters and only angel characters can actually find it during chapter 3 as you will head to Polura's Fall early on for your angel mythic quest. Now since we are talking about tomes, it's also important to note you can find quite a lot of books spread throughout the game that give you permanent bonuses upon being read, such as plus 10 to hit points, and even a plus one die to sneak attack even if your character does not have the sneak attack feature. I also already have a guide talking about books in Wrath of the Righteous, link down below in the description and also to the side here. Now as far as skill points you actually have a singular item that can grant you an untyped stacking bonus to all of your skills by a plus one, the Grand Owl of Wisdom. Finding it is somewhat easy as well, all you have to do is head to the Hell Knights camp basically the same area you have to go for Ragu's character quest during chapter 3, then just head left to this little area below the bridge here, and with a perception check, you'll be able to find the Grand Owl of Wisdom. Use it on your character, and you'll get a permanent plus one bonus to all of your skill points. Of course, we also have the amazing Profane Ascension passive, that gives you a plus six Profane bonus to basically your highest ability score, and then a plus 4 profane bonus to another one of your ability scores. The way it works is a bit random, I think. It tries to give you the plus 6 to your highest ability score, and then the plus 4 to your second highest ability score. Getting it is also simple, all you have to do is accept Nocticula's gift at the end of chapter 4, after you defeat Baphomet. 
Just remember that by accepting Nocticula's gift, during certain dialogue options, you will have to pass a will check whenever you try to go against Nocticula's wishes. And if you do that, you will lose your Profane Ascension bonus, but you should be able to acquire it again at Chapter 6. And speaking about Profane Ascension, you also have a similar and very amusing unclean gift that you can get by accepting the reward from the Fulsome Queen after you defeat Hapzamira and the Dragon for her. Now just remember that you can only get this after you defeat both Hapzamira and Baphomet and then you have to return and talk again with the Fulsome Queen for your reward. So if you want this buff, be sure to talk with her before you leave for Dresden and start Chapter 5. So Unclean Gift gives you a plus 2 profane bonus to Constitution, a plus 2 stacking natural armor class bonus, immunity to diseases and also 50% fortification. And also 50% fortification. Which basically means half the time the enemies get a critical hit on you, the critical hit will fumble and instead just become a normal hit. Just be warned that, unlike Nocticula's gift, Unclean Gift also has a downside as it will reduce your charisma permanently by minus 4. So if you have a charisma based character you probably won't want this. Another very powerful permanent boost is Incorporeal Charm, which gives your main character, I know it says Darren here, but that's a mistake, a plus 10 inherent bonus to concentration checks, but most importantly, a deflection bonus to armor class equal to your charisma modifier, and this can be absolutely insane on characters that have high charisma, such as my angel oracle here, who has a plus 18 charisma bonus, which means an extremely powerful plus 18 deflection to his armor class, all from incorporeal charm. To get this passive, you will have to make a deal with the other entity during Darren's last personal quest at chapter 5. Just be advised that by accepting the other's offer, you will also permanently lose Darren who will be killed, with no chances of getting him back. Also, if you are an angel main character, then just remember you can always cast the Sunform spell for the same benefit. It is, however, a level 9 spell with only one round duration per level. Now let's talk about the Demon Graph ability. It offers quite a lot of bonuses to many different stuff, such as plus 2 natural armor, enhancement, and this is a stacking natural armor bonus, so it should stack with, for example, the Bark Skin spell or Amulets of Natural Armor. A plus 2 inherent bonus to penetrating enemy spell resistance, concentration checks, also a plus 2 to difficulty class of your spells, and even to your attack rolls, damage rolls, and saving throws. Once again, because these are inherent bonuses, they will stack with pretty much everything else. The only downside is that whenever your hit points fall below 20%, your character will basically become enraged and attack the closest target, as if they were berserk, so you will lose control of your character. But this can be mitigated, after all, so long as you take proper care of your character, you can easily keep them above the 20% hit points threshold. Now getting the demon graft is also very easy, all you have to do is talk to the demon healer inside the Battle Bliss arena area during chapter 4 and request to be upgraded with the demon graft. An amusing part about this is that if you have Nanyo in your party when you first talked with him, you also get to upgrade Nanyo with the demon graft, so both your main character and Nanyo will get the demon graft ability. You do not have to choose between one of the other. Just remember that Nanyo has to be in your party when you first talk with the demon healer, otherwise you will not be able to get this later on for her. Lastly, we have the very interesting Mongrel's Blessing passive, that makes you immune to death effects, poison and electricity. Also, whenever you land a hitting melee, the enemy must pass a fortitude saving throw or suffer one permanent negative level to a maximum of plus 10. This can be quite powerful, even though it has a saving throw, it is per attack. So for characters that have a lot of attacks per round, like my Scald Trickster here, you can easily drain enemies of a lot of negative levels. Especially because the difficulty class is based on your character level, so can easily become 30+, plus, especially if you are a charisma focused character. Now, getting Mongrel's Blessing feature can be a bit tough because it's only available if you romance Wenduag and then choose to accept Savamelec's poison in one of her later events. This probably makes it the rarest and most unique of all the passives. After all, getting it has a very specific requirement of not only having a certain party member and you can end up with just Lon instead of Wenduag and also romancing her. Still, it can be a very powerful passive. 
Lastly, we have the permanent version of the Holy Aura buff. It works in the same way as the spell, so plus 4 deflection to armor class and plus 4 resistance bonus on saving throws against evil creatures. Besides that, 25 spell resistance and immunity to dominate and charm effects. Besides a blind on hit effect whenever the enemy tries to hit you, but this does have a difficulty class. You can get this buff by choosing the side of Hokugao, the Silver Dragon, in the Dawn of the Dragon's quest at chapter 5. Right after accepting his side, you will already have a permanent Holy Aura boost. To get the Dawn of the Dragon's quest and this event at chapter 5, you actually first have to help Latimus during chapter 3, he will come to your court in Dresden and ask you to go ahead to the Dragon Burial Ground at map area. Simply head there, talk with him, and later on he will also tell you to go there again during chapter 5, and this is when this event will actually take place. So be sure to pick the side of the Silver Dragon for the permanent Holy Aura. Alright, so this was it everyone, I hope you've enjoyed this video on all of the permanent boosts you can find in Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. If you want your character to be as strong as possible, then be sure to pick all of these boosts, or at least most of them. As usual, please remember to support the channel if you can by becoming a member, which means you'll even get to personally request videos about any RPG topics from me, and even request new games from me to play and talk about. Besides that, liking and subscribing of course. Thank you for watching and see you next time, friends!